Okay, uh, we're going to have roll call. Council, go ahead and sign in. Did everybody? Okay, thank you. Michelle? All councilors present with um, Councilor Griego previously asking to be excused and a quorum has been declared. Okay, thank you. Next item we have is um, the agenda approval. Mayor, I move that we approve the agenda as presented, excusing Councilor Griego from the meeting. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Do we have any further discussion? Okay. Start voting. Okay, let's show. Motion carried unanimously. Thank you. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the uh, citizen comment section. Alamosa City Council welcomes your comments. Citizens wishing to speak may obtain one of these um, cards here and uh, their speaker card and you can pass it along to Lachelle and she'll make sure that uh, we get them and we will allow you to uh, come up to the podium and um, make your comments. There is a three minute uh, limitation so once once you get to three minutes uh, the clock will buzz and we will ask you to kindly uh, come to a conclusion uh, when that time comes. Do we have anyone in the audience who wants to fill out one of these? Okay. Well, tonight I have three. The first person is Chester Jones. Please come up to the podium, Mr. Jones, and state your name. I am Chester Jones. I am a co-pastor with Calvary Bible Chapel here in Alamosa. Do I understand, and am I at the correct meeting, that there is discussion or thoughts about whether to have clubs in the city limits of Alamosa for marijuana use, is that correct? Yes, sir, that will be on the agenda today. Thank you. You're welcome. I would like to voice a strong opposition to that being in favor of by the city council, that it would not pass. Uh, I grew up in Alamosa. I am proud of this town. I shop in Alamosa. I have raised my family here. And representing our church, there's a number of people who certainly live here and uh, are, are community members, although maybe outside the city limits. We understand uh, the issues back and forth of the marijuana issue. I'm sympathetic to medical marijuana to an extent. The recreational marijuana and, and casual use we have to be against as a church here in Alamosa. If we agreed with it in any way, everyone would say, what kind of church is that? So we must and we do stand against drugs in Alamosa of all sorts, not just marijuana, but all sorts. And so we would like to just ask the council, and thank you for uh, attending to the matters of Alamosa itself, but we'd like to ask you to consider strongly to not allow uh, community and drug-related uh, clubs and activity within the city limits, I know that's what your, what your jurisdiction is. So thank you very much for your time. We do appreciate it. Thank you. Next, we have Rob Orenthoff. And Mayor, if I can just clarify too for any future public comment, the item before council is um, to look at um, let me look at this, um, prohibiting marijuana consumption clubs. So just to make sure everybody understands the recommendation is to prohibit those clubs, that, that might help some of the language for the public comment. Okay, thank you very much, Heather. Rob Oringdorf, uh, resident of Alamosa. Um, I'm also here to comment on the uh, ordinance that's before council this evening, uh, the first reading. You know, I, I, again, I, I commend council for uh, being ahead of the of the bar, if you would, uh, I know that uh, you know the growing of marijuana in that ordinance. Uh, you know, you guys were ahead of it before you know other things happened. Uh, you know, and so that something was was uh, passed 
uh, so that there was some guidelines and uh, I know that there's some tweaking going on as far as that ordinance goes. But uh, I too, as, uh, as Mr. Jones, uh, would strongly urge council to prohibit those clubs in the city of Alamosa because the thing that I would remind you of, which I probably don't need to, but marijuana recreational and marijuana retail establishments were, were soundly defeated in the last election. And so, you know, again, I would hope that you would continue with um, this type of forward thinking and, uh, the, and have the ordinance so that those type of establishments are indeed banned in Alamosa. And I thank you very much for that. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Mayor? Uh, ask a question. I just want to, I just want to clarify that they're saying vote for the ordinance. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. I just want to clarify with Mr. Warrendorf and Mr. Jones that you were, you're recommending that city council vote for the ordinance. Correct. The ordinance prohibits. Yeah. Yeah, right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Next up, we have uh, Terry Wiley. Councilman, I'm Terry Wiley. I'm a chiropractor here in Alamosa. I do not reside, I reside in the county, not in the city. The uh, last election, the overwhelming majority voiced opinions of what they wanted, and I think that's the direction our community wants to go. And as our leaders, I think the language that you've put together so far for the uh, prohibition, prohibiting marijuana, is good language. I encourage your leadership to continue and hold that line. I think that's what we want in our community is a drug-free community in all levels. So continue, and I wish you well in your new offices, all the new electees. Good luck. We're here to help wherever we can. Thank you. Thank you. Now it's time for follow-up to the audience comments. Council, do you have any follow-up? Anyone? Staff? Okay. Next up on the agenda, we have the uh, ceremonial items, the oath of office for our at-large counselor. Um, Michelle, will you be doing that tonight or? Okay. Thank you, sir. Welcome, Councillor Daniels. We're so glad to have you as a part of our team. Just like we did with the other candidates um, who uh, joined our team a few weeks ago, we're going to allow you to say a few comments to the audience. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Um, I, I just want to say to Council and to the community, thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm so thankful to have the opportunity to serve um, again and to continue to serve in this new role. 
Um, I was very impressed with all of the candidates who interviewed, and I really felt comfortable that any one of them would have done a great job, and I'm really appreciative of their passion and their commitment to the community, and I hope that in this position I continue to work with them um, and share their ideas and that we can bring some of the things that they talked about last night to fruition. Um, I'm really excited too to have a larger constituency to talk to and to be kind of, to be able to hear from the entire community and not just one ward. And I appreciate that. Um, I'm really looking forward to working with everyone. Um, and I promise that I'm going to work hard and that I will represent the community well. And I hope that I hold up what council expects of me after their approval last night. So thank you all for giving me this chance. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Any other comments, counselors? All right, thank you. Now you can roll up your sleeve and get to work with us. All right, <laughs> All right. good deal. Okay, the next item we have on the agenda is consent calendar A. The consent calendar allows multiple actions with one motion. Consent calendar A contains routine items which have been recommended for action by staff or advisory boards. Council may remove a consent calendar item for separate consideration. Tonight we have two items. Um, first one is to receive the November 2017 monthly report, and the second one is approve the minutes of the meeting for December the 6th, 2017. I move that we approve consent calendar A. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Okay. If not, start voting. Okay. Michelle? Motion carried unanimously. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Council. The next item is regular business. Um, first is business brought forward by city staff, Public Works. And we'll be talking about the consideration of the request from Black and Vec on behalf of AT&T for upgrades to existing cellular, cellular communication facilities at 962 Craft. This is a special review of a permitted use in the RL residential low zoning district. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Um, as you stated, this is a request for review by special permit, or <laughs> special review of an existing permit. Um, <clears throat> this is a request by AT&T AT Communications to upgrade the existing facilities they have on the water tower. And actually there's an, um, a typo in the staff report. It's 902 craft, not okay. 962 craft. And the uh, request is to update existing facilities on the, the water tower. And the proposed uh, Upgrades will not significantly alter any of the um, visual impacts of the uh, local community or the, the greater community. And staff's request per the, uh, the Planning Commission is to recommend approval of the, the request as submitted. Are there any questions? When you say an upgrade, you, you don't mean changing the height? It's just upgrading? No, the they have existing antennas on top of the, the water tower. And they're just adding some additional, or they're taking out, changing out radio heads with an upgraded uh, transmitter. Okay, Councilor Daniels. Uh, thank you. Um, is this the same, we had talked about, uh, I think a few months ago about renewing the contract. Is this because of that contract renewal and the changes, or is this a whole different thing with them? Uh, this is just regular maintenance. Just regular maintenance, thank you. To answer your question, this is the same company that we, a couple months ago, I don't know, two, three, four, maybe even months ago, um, approved a 
uh, additional, they had an additional tower on there that went beyond what their lease was and we decided that they could do that without renegotiating the terms of their lease but made very clear to them that that was the last time we were going to allow them to add additional facilities. So Dan and I talked about this and he made clear that they're not adding any additional facilities, they're just swapping out the radio heads on their existing ones. Thank you very much. Any further discussion? No. Okay, Councilman Veal. Thank you, Mayor. I move that we approve the request from Black and VH on behalf of AT&T for upgrades to existing cellular communications facilities at 962 Craft. 902 at Craft. 902. I second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Does it need to be amended? Okay. Start voting. Did everybody vote? Okay, Lachelle. Motion carried unanimously. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next item is under finance, resolution number 26-2017, amending ordinance 17-2016 for the 2017 budget, also known as the third budget amendment. Good evening, council. Hi. Um, as you know, sometimes things during the year don't go the way we planned the year before. So <clears throat> in that light, we need to make a few budget adjustments for the 2017 operating budget. Um, there's one change from what you were sent on Friday. Um, under <clears throat> There's an increase in non-departmental for a levy certification, but we got information today that led us to believe we wouldn't need to do that. This year it'll probably be in the 18 budget. So I took that one off for the resolution. The final resolution does not include that adjustment. So <clears throat> I'm just gonna go ahead and go through these. And then if you have questions as I'm going through, please feel free to stop me. Um, I'm going to start with general fund revenue. The increase in the SID is for a lot that was totally prepaid uh, for a sale. Um, we have an IGA with Trinidad State Junior College and that 41473 represents the revenue that they pay us and then <clears throat> we use that revenue to pay for uh, police, the additional police officers that is there and his is the associated expenses. Um, the PD grant for e-ticketing is a grant that um, the police department worked hard and got um, funding so that they could upgrade to e-ticketing, which is, according to Wayne, is working really very, very well. It's a lot faster for the police officers. Makes um, <clears throat> the citation process much more expedient. Um, the training foundation, thirty-two thousand, is money that um, the PD is reimbursed for expenses they incur for training operations over in the training center. Um, the de decrease in SLB grant revenue, it's not really <clears throat> decrease, it was just overstated by me. I made a budget adjustment in the second budget amendment that I should not have. The original grant was for $500,000 and that's what it should be. The transfer in from reserves for equipment, um, the next two, the one for the fire department and for the PD is each year, those <clears throat> departments transfer money to a reserve account when they know they have big purchases coming up like the fire department bought new breathing apparatus and radios for the firemen. And so when, this was actually I think was budgeted for next year but the fire chief was able to realize some savings by buying it this year so he went ahead and purchased those and that's the 179,000 is for breathing apparatus and the remainder of the radios. Um, the reserve for the <clears throat> radios for the PD, as they, same thing, were able to uh, realize some cost savings by buying them this year, so they did so. Um, the increase in fiber uh, optic, or it's fiber cable that the IT ran for the new cemetery building, this expense was approved earlier by council for them to do this. 
um, expense, but it wasn't budgeted, so we have to do an amendment for that. Um, the 150,000 increase for the street sips was for overlays, like the slurry overlays that was budgeted in 2016, but they weren't able to complete it. So they did complete the work in 16, and we just uh, moved the budget from the fund balance for 17. Um, the First Street project did overrun, <clears throat> and in speaking with the Public Works, part of that was because when they dug down to put the overlay in, the sub-base was not what they expected, and so it turned out to be a lot more expensive proposition than they had budgeted for, and then in addition, July was very rainy, so they would put the sub-base down, and then if we'd have one of those torrential rains, and it would wash it away, so they'd have to put more down. So it turned out to be a little more costly than they anticipated. And, and Judy, just to, to jump in, um, back on the 2016 for the CIP overlay, so um, 2016 we did not do any overlays, and so for in 2017 we did twice as much since we did not do it in 2016. So I just wanted to make sure that that, that was clear for that 150000 that we did not use in 2016 was in the budget for 2016. It was not done, so we used that 150 for overlays, the same type of project projects in 2017. So go ahead, Judy. Oh, thank you. Um, and as the way I understand it, the, the streets that were designated to be done in 16 that weren't done were done in 17. So, and then they went moved on to the 17 projects. Uh, on, then on to the general fund expenditures. The SID paid is when someone, the way we've handled it in the past is if someone pays off a lot, then we take that money and put it towards the loan, so we save that interest. Um, the increase from, from the, for the rate radios and breathing apparatus, the 179,000. Um, the increase for the PD, the 37,350 is for wa uh, wages, um, benefits, and other like equipment and so forth that that, that P, the officer needs for the TSJC contract. Um, E-ticketing expense is what the P, what it actually costs the PD in addition <clears throat> to what we, the city contributed also to that project. Foundation training is they spend it and then they get it back. So it's, that's just a wash for the most part. The PD radios, um, fiber optics for the building. And then that the additional 4,123 is the balance of that 4, 41,473 contract for TSJC, and those are for uh, the cameras and uh, computer type equipment that the officer needs. Um, the that 19,783 that we're going to transfer capital reserve for the fire truck. Um, we bought a fire truck this year. And we were able to realize savings because we paid in advance. And between the budgeted amount that we had put for the fire truck and what we were able to save is what we're going to transfer that into reserve so we can put it towards the fire truck we'll buy in 2022. Um, <clears throat> there was a, for some reason in last year's budget, they were short $2,000 to pay the ACLC debt service. We paid it, but because I paid it, and it's, the money wasn't transferred in, it made us over, and then we'll get a budget, a ding from the auditors because we'll be over budget, so that's just to cover the total um, expense for that debt. And then that next 75,000 is we're not gonna do that one. Uh, the, the increase in furniture for the city manager's office was actually budgeted in 2018, but they ordered it, and as miraculous as it is, it came in early, so the invoice was dated 17, so we needed to pay for it this year, so we went ahead and budgeted. And then the, the, here's the 235 for the first street project and the 150 for the street overlay. Um, then to enterprise fund revenue, <clears throat> we have money in the debt services fund, and the debt services fund is money that comes from sales tax that was budgeted to pay off the water treatment, the water treatment plant, not the water treatment plant, but the, the sewer, sewer treatment plant. And so those excess revenues can be used according to the the documents for water, the water distribution system. So we're transferring that money in to pay for um, 
the operations of the water distribution system so that we can use the revenue, some of the, we can transfer some of the enterprise fund revenue so we can pay for some capital projects that we have coming up there. Um, the and this was, just to clarify, this was a funding source that we discussed of council during a work session probably about five months ago in regards to utilizing that sales tax for some of the upcoming capital projects that we have in the enterprise fund. We have, uh, you, you probably saw in the CAP, we have some big projects coming up there, so. <clears throat> That's what that money is from there. And the lease, lease proceeds is um, when we borrowed money for the water projects, the augmentation plan, the levy, some of the levy work, um, the, re, the moving the recharge system, um, that's what that money is for. It was estimated that we would need at least that much to complete the water augmentation plan, which hopefully we, we have two years left to work on that. So, and I think it's gonna come together. Um, and that'll just stay, it's designated for just for those water projects, so that'll stay in savings until those, pro until those projects come along and then we'll draw those funds down. And then the water well shares for the augmentation plan, we've already purchased $525,000, which is 350 acre feet of well water, and we, had, we put 50,000 down on some additional well water, some earnest money that hopefully will come across here in the next couple of months. Um, the bond principal payments are, those are the bond pay, principal payments on the water project's debt. Um, the fire truck reserve I, we've spoken about. Um, we got a grant from COG to buy new bucking chutes in June, so um, that's, it was there and it wasn't budgeted, so we just budgeted so it would be properly reported. Um, the increase in the lease proceeds from the multiple per, for the ice rink, um, when we did the COP for that, um, we budgeted it $2.4 million, and so that the difference between what we had originally budgeted and the 2.4 is the 141,593, and that is to cover the increase in contingencies because there's been some changes that have had to been made during the building process, just things that weren't anticipated. Can you comment on some of those changes? Well, I think that, um, actually I don't know, I just know that they're that building things like the sometimes the, the ground wasn't the way they thought it was gonna be, so they had to do additional dirt work and we, we had to do some d additional tidal work and I don't know, there's just several different change orders that they've, they've done so far. And I don't really get involved in those those parts, so I can't speak directly to those things. And those improvements, are those, you're saying those, uh, not improvements, but those changes, those things that need to be fixed, those are eating into our contingency fund? Yes. Okay. But the total amount that was authorized for the debt, we have not exceeded that. So we are still within the right. total amount for the debt. We're just starting to get into that contingency, which is exactly what it's meant for. Perfect, and everything that we, we asked for, and we wanted, and that we planned for is, is gonna get done, correct? Correct. Yes. Um, <laughs> we we had a discussion today that, that we're still really, really trying to, to aim for, for mid-January, but apparently our chiller is stuck at the border in Mexico. So um, we, we don't have any control over that, and we're trying to, to get that here as soon as possible. But that's the stage that we're at. And they were putting up dasher boards, I think, beginning this week as well. Now, what is the process for approving a uh, change order? The public works director has been approving those. So by, he, by he deals, as far as I know, I, I'm Yes, not, sir. We're still within the, the project. So you're still within the budget of the project? Yes. Yeah, we have, I think we figured the other day, we still have like $40,000 that's not committed yet, so. We're hoping it stays that stays that way. Councilman uh, Carson. So once we hit that forty thousand dollar limit and that contingency fund mm -hmm. is depleted, any changes that would have to come that would have to occur would have to come before council. I believe that's correct. Is that we would need to do an update with an anticipated if we're going to be over budget. We're not going to bring each incre incremental thing. We would bring it as a package deal if we believe we're going over budget. We don't normally bring small incremental things. But I know that um, they've been watching it really closely.
closely. We've met a couple of times because it's getting down to the wire and we try to make sure that everything's included. So, and they, Harry keeps a pretty good eye on it. Then, any other questions? Um, uh, the increase in transfers to the water department is the transfer. We transferred early in the year $383,000, and now we're transferring an additional $800,000, and that's the $1,183,000 that's going into the enterprise fund revenue. So in, in short, um, you'll see most of these were either because of um, grants, which we were very excited to receive and, and be able to put towards these projects. And so it's making sure we're accounting for the incoming funds from those grants and then also the expenses related to those grants. The other part is um, some of the capital, capital projects that council had discussed. Really the, the item that is um, probably new for council is the overage on First Street. And as, as Judy explained, um, that was because of the sub base and the rain. But um, we also are going to evaluate the next phases and the cost estimates for those because we anticipate the subgrade is gonna be pretty much the same. And so we're gonna run into those types of issues. Um, however, we know from a council perspective, you wanted to make sure we're still able to do projects in other parts of town. So it could be that we have to add an extra year or something like that to get First Street done. But we'll definitely be bringing that back before you when we have our CIP discussions. But I wanted to let you know that given what we ran into with the first phase and finding out how bad the sub base was beneath the road, we anticipate it to be that way for the rest of the, the length of the street. Any uh, comments, okay. Council? Thank you okay, very thank much. You. Thank you. Council Mayor, I move, sorry, may I move that we approve resolution number 26 to 2017? I will second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Okay. Start voting, please. Michelle. Motion carried unanimously. Thank you, Council. The next item is City Manager Legal. The first reading of ordinance number 34-2017, an ordinance prohibiting marijuana consumption clubs within the City of Alamosa. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Um, it, what you have before you tonight is an ordinance that would prohibit marijuana consumption clubs. The consumption clubs are essentially a forum where individuals can bring their own marijuana and um, smoke it and, and do that in a, in a social, social manner, similar to a cigar bar, bar or a hookah lounge. Um, one of the differences is that marijuana is illegal under federal law compared to tobacco, and that most commercial marijuana facilities other than the testing facility is not permitted in Alamosa. Um, and these, are, these have been action by council in, in earlier ordinances. However, neither the state statute nor the Alamosa Code of Ordinances addresses marijuana consumption clubs. Given the timing of the consideration of the request that council had received in the upcoming election, council issued a moratorium on the clubs until we could see how the election turned out. That moratorium expires May 1st of 2018. The election was held on November 7th to ask the question to the voters of both retail marijuana and medical marijuana. Both of those items failed and um, were not passed. Based on that um, interpretation from that vote, staff has placed before you this order ordinance that would prohibit it. The other consideration is sometimes when discussing recreation or medical marijuana sales, oftentimes proponents would um, point to the legalization would bring in a perceived sales tax benefit. There is a difference on a club though because there would not be any sales tax collected on patrons going there to, to smoke socially um, in, in that type of format. Um, 
There currently is a petition to ban marijuana consumption clubs that is being circulated. And at this point, we're not sure how many signatures they have, but we have made them aware that this is before council. Um, and if it is passed, there is the possibility that they might cease their action since it's in line with what their petition is for. Thank you, Heather. Council, any comments? Yes, Councilman Brawls. No, I, I think uh, I think the voters basically has given us a mandate about uh, about marijuana. So I would move to approve this ordinance. Okay, I'll, I'll wait until we hear. Hey, go ahead, Councilman Carson. I second his motion. Okay. All right. We have a motion and a second. I think we probably need to clean it up a little bit because what we want to do is approve the ordinance and, and then on the first reading and set up for a public hearing. Is that what we're trying to do, Eric? That's correct. So you've had a motion and a second and you can have further discussion now okay. um, about that. So we have a motion and a second and um, now we're open up for further discussion. Yes, Council uh, Lord Daniels. Th thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I agree with uh, Mr. Broyles that one of the things that we were waiting for the moratorium for and wanting to have the discussions about as council was be, to see how the vote went. Um, and I, I believe that this is a good, um, a good ordinance. I'm interested in hearing the public hearing on um, January 3rd, uh, but I, I do believe that this, this is a good, a good way to move in the city and I'm for this ordinance. Thank you, Councilor Daniels. I too um, would like to just um, say that I too am in favor for us moving forward uh, with setting this up for a public hearing as well. As we all know, it was soundly defeated, as uh, Mr. Orrin uh, said earlier to, uh, in the meeting. Um, and the people have spoken. And so um, I'm in favor of that too. So we have a motion and a second. Okay, start voting, please. Michelle. Motion carried unanimously. Thank you. Okay, the next item on the agenda is committee reports. Do we have any committee reports tonight? Councilor Hensley. So, so to start off, uh, let's see. So I went to the CML uh, executive board meeting last, I'm losing track of days, I think it was just Friday. And so obviously discussing uh, where we're going with legislature and uh, all the things that are come up, gonna come up here in January, February. Without a doubt, alcohol is going to be the big um, item that is going to have a lot of discussion, a lot of things coming up. We are getting close to where um, all of the things that have passed uh, as far as grocery stores, gas stations, all of that. And so now as it's getting closer, there is a lot of discussion and things to uh, decide where in regards to that. So that actually is probably going to be the largest um, I guess it's probably the, like sort of last year how marijuana was, this year it'll be about alcohol. Um, one of the things I wanted to share, so let me just get my notes real quick. So was, we were going over our uh, packet and discussing our uh, long-term goal plans and things like that. One of the things that came up is as a CML executive board member, uh, we have some goals as being part of the CML board uh, to, as far as our, comp our, our part in the CML. And so one of the things that I'm gonna really uh, focus on is the idea uh, from a leadership perspective, is that idea of setting up meetings with councils and boards in each of our respective areas. And so my plan is within the next few months is to go ahead and put a meeting together that will incorporate all of our different towns and cities throughout our community um, and so that we can work together and so that I can also spread and share that leadership through CML um, as their ambassador. And so anyway, I just want to let you know that is my plan for the next few months and that I'll put something together and let you know once that's done. Um, the other thing is I did go to the rec board meeting 
And that's always a fun one to go to. I, I've said that now for the second time. Uh, one of the things there definitely to uh, discuss or that was exciting and it went along with the lines of what Andy had said at our last meeting, but you can never say it too many times, is how exciting it is to get the GOCO Inspire grant. And um, obviously that was shared at the meeting. And I think one of the things I'm most excited about is that it's such a partnership. It's not just for us or not just to us, but it is that idea of sharing with Boys and Girls Club, sharing with the Rio Grande Farm Park, things like that. So I think it's something that's very exciting. Again, I want to thank Andy and his group for all the hard work to do that. And um, so those are the fun things that I get to mention. So that's about it. Thank you, Councillor Hensley. Do we have any other uh, Councillor? Um, go ahead, Councillor Vigil. Thank you, Mayor. I went to a work session by the Historical Preservation Committee. Uh, they were trying and planning on being on the, on the agenda tonight. Uh, I, they will be on the next uh, agenda, the next meeting, and they're going to bring to you a building to try to get on the, on the historical preservation list for Alamosa. So, and they also want to present to you um, their yearly review, what they've done, and uh, go from there. Thank you, Councillor Vigil. Next up, we have staff announcements. Thank you, Mayor. Um, it's very short tonight. We do have some upcoming events that we want to make you aware of. The first annual Roundup Rudolph 5K is going to be this Saturday, December 23rd at 3 p.m. And we also have the annual Alamosa Christmas Light Parade at 6 p.m. again this Saturday, the 23rd. We have set a work session for City Council for January 3rd before your next regular scheduled meeting. Um, and that is to uh, um, discuss the decriminalization of the city codes re in relation to some of the changes we're making in municipal court. So those items are coming up before council. The only other item I briefly wanted to discuss tonight is um, it was recently in the newspaper in regards to the regional um, recycling group that's taking a look at how we can improve recycling regionally. And I just want to just provide a little bit of the background for City Council and make sure from a clarification perspective that um, everybody's on the same page. You could read some different stuff into that and um, with with Mark being new, I just wanted to make sure we had that that historical wraparound. And so um, as, as you guys know, the group has come before City Council a few different times. The city's commitment to them is that we are willing to consider being a regional hub. We would just need to make sure that the funding stream is there to where it does not impact our rate payers. And so it's something that we were appreciative to be a part of those discussions since that's the potential direction that that study will take. Um, and that commitment remains um, from the city for that consideration. The other part is um, there was discussion on if there's a 30000 approximate $30,000 loss um, for the Ricky recycling. And just to add a little bit more language to that, um, what that really means is the fees that we charge do not necessarily cover the operations of the Ricky Recycling Center. However, philosophically, what council has said is that when we look at our sanitation rates, that we're setting them that covers not only the traditional Additional sanitation, the trash hauling, but also that portion that the fees don't cover for the recycling. And so the city's budget as a whole is not as a loss. It's just that the user fees do not cover the entire cost of the Ricky Recycling Center. And so I just want to make sure that, that that clarification's there and that there's no concerns that somehow our budget is inappropriate or, or anything like that. And then the other was there was discussion of how this might, the operations might relate to the discussions we're having with curbside recycling and just want to make it clear that none of those decisions have been made um, and we tried to reinforce with that group as well that there's still more discussions that council needs to have. Um, council's been clear that we need to do some public outreach, potentially a survey, find out what the interest is for curbside. Um, but even if we don't do go to curbside, that does not necessarily mean that the Ricky Recycling Center would go away. Um, some of it might be reduced down, but we would still need something for green waste. Um, and we don't know if we choose to do curbside, if it's going to be mandatory for everyone or voluntary. So those considerations still haven't been taken 
into account, which would impact the level of service we provide out of the Ricky Center. And so um, we just felt it was important to make sure that kind of everyone understood where we are in some of those different discussions and that we still remain committed to being a partner regionally if they can find a funding stream that, that would allow for that to happen and not impact our rate payers. And with that, that's all we have from a staff update. Thank you, Heather. Uh, Councilor Carson. Um, I was just curious as, as to see if there's ever been, um, if you guys have ever looked into possibly offering it as a service that a citizen could pay for curbside. I, I'm not sure what's been done as far as you guys study, but uh, I'm not so, I'm not so convinced that people probably wouldn't be willing to to maybe buy into some sort of service. I know it'd be probably somewhat inconvenient, but I was just wondering if there's ever been any research done into that. Um, so what work has been done thus far is we, we did hire a firm that specialized in evaluating what your utility rate should be in order to be sustainable. And they, they had a lot of expertise, so they would look at our water, um, wastewater, trash, and, and, and take a look at that to say, okay, here's what your capital expenses are coming up, um, here's what you're charging, here's where you're short, here's where you're over. Over. And so they really focused in and helped us better evaluate what our utility rates needed to be. As part of that project, we wanted them to take a look at what the cost would be for <coughs> curbside recycling. Um, in so they also had a study that, that looked at if we wanted to provide curbside recycling, what would those costs be? And so we held a work session with city council to review those. I don't know them right off the top of my mind. So we'll get that information to you. Um, and then council's direction was, exactly what you said. We're quite not sure what the public wants. Do they want to pay this? Because we would want it to be self-sustaining. We don't want it to, it's going to have to pay for itself through rates. And so is it something that there's enough of the community that they want to do this? How do they want to do it? Those types of things. And so our plan was once we got into a little bit of a slower season out of construction, um, that we would probably do a survey and reach out to the public to determine what the demand is, what they're willing to pay for, and what they're not willing to pay for. So we have not done that public outreach just yet. And then we'd obviously bring that back before council for you guys to to take into consideration and discuss further. Was it discussed where the processing would take place? Would it, would it take place at the same location at Ricky Recycling as if there was a curbside so you, we would need to have a transfer station then, and so that's part of the, the consideration is that we would need to be um, being able to transfer that. And so some of that it goes into the capital costs that were part of the spreadsheet um, in order to have the facilities to do that. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions or comments for Heather? Okay, the next item is on the agenda is the local liquor licensing authority actions uh, consent calendar item B. The consent calendar allows multiple actions with, with one motion. Consent calendar B contains routine items which have been recommended, on a, recommended for action by staff or advisory boards. Council may remove a consent calendar item for separate consideration. Tonight we have accept stipulation agreements for compliance check violations uh, for Thai Hut, Wise Apples, Terry's Liquor, and the Beer Keg Depot. Yes, Councillor Daniels. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I move that we um, approve consent calendar B. I'd like to say something. Oh, sure, go ahead. Okay, so I mean, if somebody wants to say, but. Okay, so if we could have, did, we could did have you make a motion? If we have a second. motion, maybe a second and then okay. discussion. Okay. So, I'll let somebody say. So we have a motion. We would need a second before we can go into discussion. Well, right. you're, you're in a consent calendar item. If, if Liz just wants to say something, then she could do that. If you're going to have a discussion, someone needs to pull it off of consent and have discussion about the item itself. So is, are you just going to have general comments, or is it going to be something you need to take off and pull out? And that's not a big deal, but it, it, consent calendar is, if it's on consent calendar, you prove it on consent. If, you want, if anybody wants to discuss it further, they just pull it off, and you guys have a discussion. 
We have a motion. I'll second that motion. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Go ahead, Councilor Daniels. I'm sorry, Councilor Hanson. Oh, okay. It's like, okay. <laughs> so I would like it, and I'm not going to point anybody out or anything like that, but I do have a huge concern with businesses when they have their employees making it difficult for their employees to do what is right and that is carting the people that are there. And I definitely know one of these organizations in particular, I know for a fact, has told their employees not to be so, not to card so many people. And that person got in trouble uh, for doing it so much and that person who worked there stated that she could get in trouble as well, plus this is what she's learned. She worked at a previous establishment, went through the training, and she knows this is right. So my concern on this is the fact that if that's the culture of that organization, um, that to me is a concern. And so I'm not sure if there's something we can do about it. I'm not sure. Uh, but I guess I want it stated that it is known that that's happening and that they need to be much more supportive of their staff. And not just supportive, they need to change that culture to make it that people are being carded and that we're trying to be safe. And that um, it isn't something where they should uh, kind of deter their employees to do that. So I guess I just wanted that stated. Um, like I said, I'm not gonna put the, the company out there, but one of these organizations has done that. Eric? So, Councillor Hensley, I, I take that as you actually pulled this from consent calendar, and I also heard you ask, is there something you can do? Yes, there is. Um, you can decide that you're not going to approve whichever stipulation that is, and that would require that you call out that business, um, and you, you make a motion that the stipulation not be approved, and that you do something else, and that sends it back to um, the city prosecutor to address that issue with the uh, licensee, and uh, then there is no stipulation, and they will come before council, and you will act uh, as you see fit to impose whatever sanctions you see fit. Councilor uh, Carson, and then Councilor Brawls up next. My question was. Uh, if we did, if we did move to, to put this on hold, not to approve the, the the item, then would we separate out that business and give them a stiffer penalty? That's what it sounds like uh, Councillor Hensley is thinking about. I hasn't made a motion, but that's what it sounded to me like she was thinking about. Yes, you can definitely separate these out. So you, it's it's not that you have to approve all or none. So you, for those that there's not the same concern, you could move ahead with the approval of the stipulation and then do something different for the one that Councillor Hensley was discussing. Then that couldn't happen tonight. We'd have to go back to to discussion. You, correct. You, well, you can approve all the others tonight, but you could not decide on a different sanction tonight for whichever one it is. Understood. Okay. Councillor um, Brawls and then Councillor Hensley. Yeah, just so I know, uh, is it a course of dealing with the city that on a first offense, a written warning is given to the people? Um, I don't know if Lachelle knows the answer to that. It, Holly might, um, the prosecutor would. I, I don't know that answer, but I assume that it is. I know that the prosecutor, when he works out these stipulations, does it based on the city actually has a, in ordinance a set table, if you will, a matrix of what kind of sanctions are appropriate for first offenses, second offenses within a year, that kind of thing. And um, I'm certain that the prosecutor would have been following that guideline. Councilor Hensley. So my dilemma is the person um, that has told me this information, obviously, um, so this person hasn't told me that it's okay to out that person as well, because in a way doing this would out that person. And so, and I didn't get a chance to ask this person 
where they stood in the sense of that happening, because that would be putting that person out there as well. So I'm not sure, I guess the only thing I would say at this point, so I don't feel comfortable doing it at this meeting, it'd be something that going forward, I'd probably be able to get a chance, so I don't know if we can postpone all of this till next time. If not, then I just would state it, um, and I'm, I'm comfortable with that, just stating it, but that potentially that that lease can be out there, um, and especially if this should happen again, I definitely would be much, um, feeling very differently about that whole situation. Okay, Eric and then Councilor Daniels. I don't believe that it would be fair to the other licensees to postpone your action on, on this tonight. So if you want to do something other than approve all of these stipulations, Councilor Hensley, you're gonna have to call it out. And that's why I say I'm okay with not doing it. I just wanted to state it. Thank you, Councilor Daniel. Thank you. Um, and because I didn't want an individual pulled off, that's why I approved the consent calendar so we could have this discussion, so I might have done that wrong, Eric, so I apologize for that. Um, but the, the frustration I have is that when we have done the liquor, liquor licensing hearings, um, we have said very specifically, make sure you get tips training, make sure you don't serve underage, and have supported the business owners when they come in for their licensing request to give them those resources, as does Holly, and say here are the options and the opportunities you have. I am extremely frustrated that we have four business businesses that didn't, didn't pass this. Um, this is not a difficult task. Um, and so, and if people don't have their IDs, they don't get served. I don't care if you're 100 and I don't care if you're 20. If you don't have your ID, you don't get served. Um, well, if you're 20, you shouldn't get served anyway. But um, the, the, the problem, I think, is that we're, I, I agree with the stipulation agreements. I have no concern with how the prosecutor did them. Um, I have a concern with our business owners not being responsible and training their staff appropriately. Thank you, Councilor Brawls. No, I agree with Council, Councilman Daniels. Uh, I, I guess my overall comment is I think we're going too light on this and, and we should be a little tougher. But uh, if this has been the course of dealing with the city, I don't want to change that or if, if that's in policy. Uh, but, uh, and then I don't want to hold up progress unless there's a compelling reason to do so. And I don't have a compelling reason at this point. So, uh, you know, I would be in favor of moving along with the stipulation. Okay, Heather. Thank you, Mayor. Um, depending on how the, the vote goes tonight, what I am hearing is maybe at a work session, council would like to take a look at what that ordinance is that has been providing direction to the prosecutor to kind of just do a gut check and evaluate if you think it's in line with where you guys are now and, and if it's harsh enough on, on some of these considerations. Um, and so we can always bring that before council at a work session. And then if the after reviewing that, if you want some changes, we can bring it to you for a regular meeting. And the prosecutor will work within whatever those guidelines are. Okay, Councilman Carson. Has this entity had other violations in recent years? No, I mean, I, I can certainly answer that. When, when you look at the materials presented by uh, the prosecutor, none of these entities had any violation within the last two years. Thank you, Eric. Okay, Councillor Hensley. Sorry, so I, I like that idea of us maybe having a work session and even potentially with the idea of how often are we doing these compliance checks and and I know the police is very very busy so I know it's not like an added thing but maybe that idea as well so just that whole idea and I think that would handle that so thank you okay we uh, have a motion and a second we've discussed it and now it's time for you all to start voting Okay, Lachelle. Motion carried unanimously. Thank you. Next, we have council comments. Do we have any counselors who would like to make any comments? Councilor Hensley first, go ahead. Well, I said goodbye to our municipal judge today. Um, and definitely bittersweet, I'm very happy that he has plans to go on and do fly fishing and 
seems like he's doing okay with the change. I just want to publicly say how much I appreciate everything he has done for Alamosa. I truly believe that everything he did was truly from his heart and his soul to um, do the right thing uh, in his position as a judge. And I am very thankful for everything he's done for our city. Thank you, Councilor Hensley. Councilor Brawls. No, I just want to say uh, thank you to all the candidates that applied for the at-large position last night. There were some quality candidates and quality comments. And one of the comments I, I guess I've been thinking about is, because it doesn't seem like to be too big a cost, is the person that brought up having bike racks, bike parking racks mm -hmm. at our parks. I think that's a good idea. And if it's not that expensive, I, I would like to see the, the city move forward with that. Thank you, Councillor Brawls. Councillor Carson. This is on a whole different subject, but I want to state it so that it's, I want to put this bug in all our ear for next year. Um, going around town this year, one of the things I noticed is no Christmas lights. Very few houses have decorated. Um, it's pretty, pretty sad to, to say the least. Uh, I think that next year we should do something to the effect of some sort of incentive if by you know different parts of town, whatever, uh, to encourage people to maybe be a little more in the holiday spirit. I don't know if that would entail a Christmas light decoration contest, something to that effect, just something to spark some of that Christmas spirit you know, in our neighborhoods. Because I know now versus 10 years ago, it's quite different. You don't see the same spirit. So I'd just like to put that bug in everyone's ear for next year. Thank you. Council Carson. Councilor Daniels, Councilman Vigil, and up next. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say um, that I hope everybody has a great holiday season. And I'm, I'm also, I know I said it earlier, but I'm really, really excited to be back and really excited to work with everybody. So thank you for this. Thank you. Councilor Vigil. Thank you. Um, kind of going off what Mr. Boyle said about some comments from last night, a few interviewees or people who we interviewed, however you call them, they said that um, one thing they would like to see around town is safer intersections. Um, I've brought this up every year the last four years, the intersection uh, right by on 2nd Street and uh, Highway 285, or Highway right there, okay. Uh, a couple blocks north of Walgreens. It's uh, right there by the Mills on Wheels building. You have to go out six, seven feet just to see if any cars are coming out. I'm wondering if we can look at that again and see if we can get that done. And then uh, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to everybody, to all you council and your family, safe travels. And uh, one, one thing I do want to talk, to talk about is the, uh, the marijuana discussions in that. Um, I agree with, all, with everybody what you all said. The, the, the people have spoken and marijuana consumption clubs are not welcome here. I agree with that. I'm good with that. But I, what I'm not okay with is um, some of the language that is, that is used to describe people who do use marijuana. Uh, I've heard from people who were here who left that uh, people who use marijuana are on the fringe of society, uh, who are unprofessional, who bring down society, and I don't think that's true. I have family and friends who use marijuana, and they're not losers. And I'm going to keep on saying that as long as I'm up here. Um, also, I'm going to keep saying this too, the opioid problem is much greater than the marijuana issue. And I wish those people were here. Maybe I should have said that earlier. That if, if any time we talk about marijuana, people come out of the woodwork. And kudos to them for having that passion. But opioids are killing people. So how about we come together and work on that? Thank you, Councillor Veal. Councillor Carson. Um, touching on what uh, Councillor Veal said, the intersection at Maine and Ross headed south is extremely bad as well. You got you got to move out pretty far. And they were right. There's several that are like that. But yeah, that's one that really needs to be looked at as well. And Merry Christmas to everyone. Thank you. 
I too would like to say Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to the staff and council and, and, and um, our community. I want to thank you for a, a great year. Uh, this year has been a great year. It's been a, a great learning experience for all of us. We all, I believe, are wiser and smarter uh, today than we were a, a year ago at this time. And our, our council as well, we have a new totally different makeup here on council, which is, which is great, and I'm looking forward to us moving forward in a positive uh, way in the near, near future. And um, I also would like to thank all of the candidates who came out and participated in that process last night. Um, we listen, as you can tell, a lot of the council uh, members here were listening to what you said, and we will try to implement some of the things that we have power to or either bring up some of the suggestions to staff so that they can make recommendations as we move forward. And finally, I would like to encourage all council members, if possible, show up this weekend to the uh, parade uh, event as well as the 5K run if you can and if you have an opportunity in, in, uh, within your time frame. That would be greatly appreciated because people in our community want to see us as council members in the community. Um, I can't tell you how important it is for us to be present in their lives and in their families, uh, more than just being here on Wednesday nights. When there are activities that are going on in our city, I am going to be one of those uh, um, leaders that try to encourage more participation from counselors because we heard last night from some of the candidates that people do want to see us in their communities, not just on during election time. So whenever possible, try to make a, an appearance, uh, even if it's to a little birthday party or community event, just your presence really mean a, a whole lot to the people in our community. Uh, this weekend in the parade, um, Heather, are we going to have like the fire truck go through this this year? Is anyone participating? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. And any other floats or anything from the city is going to participate at all that you know of? Uh, we'll have the law enforcement as well. Okay. Good. And parks and rec. Parks rec. Well, I want to thank you all so very much for participating uh, in the parade as well. I personally plan on just walking the parade route with with staff and just saying hi and waving and shaking hands. And and I personally would encourage all the council who can show up and walk along with the city staff as well to show a sign of support. I think that would make a huge difference um, in the eyes of those in our community. And, and Mayor, if I could just jump in. I did receive a, an email from um, Dawn Honeycutt today, and she just wanted to have a heads up on which council members might be at the parade because they always like to provide some um, recognition for the support that the city provides. So you don't have to say tonight, but if you want to just send me a quick um, note tomorrow, a quick email tomorrow, I can let her know who's going to be there, and they'll acknowledge um, everyone who's there. Thank you, Heather, and, and I will be there um, at both events. Okay, Councillor Carson. Uh, I'll be there as well at the parade. Um, in case I forget to send an email. Okay, <laughs> Councillor Hensley. <laughs> well, I guess since Russell, I'll be at the parade. Obviously, I'm, I guess, one of the judges. So, yeah, I'll, I'll be at the parade. <laughs> Councillor Daniels. Uh, I'll, I'll be there. I'm also running. If anybody wants to run, the okay with me. <laughs> I'm um, walking. I'm really excited about that. <laughs> Good. Well, thank you all so very much for, for, for committing to uh, come out there. I really appreciate it. Okay. Uh, if we don't have any other comments, this meeting is adjourned.